My approach to learning Olympic weightlifting has been to basically break it down to bits and start with the most fundamental aspects of Olympic weightlifting. Everything that I've seen so far on the videos and you guys telling me uh, in the comments has been to basically learn how to, I guess it's called cleaning the bar or taking the bar from the hip to overhead, learning the motion. You know, most people learn with a broomstick or a PVC pipe, basically taking that bar in a snatch grip position from the hip all the way to overhead. Uh, after that, I started to kind of incorporate a bit of like a hang clean or hang snatch. So going from the knee, like in that second pull and going straight over to the top, just kind of learning the bar path of that. Uh, then I started doing the overhead squatting, trying to get comfortable with the bar overhead and going to a full squat. So I've kind of learned these two things or three things uh, step by step in these last eight days that I've been trying to learn Olympic weightlifting. Uh, today I thought I would combine all of the things that I've learned so far and try to execute those things. So essentially I think it's called a hang snatch. So basically from the second pull, so the bar starts at the knee and you kind of triple extend, uh, the bar goes overhead and then you go into a full squat. Basically what I would love to do is get that timing right. You know, this is the first time I've ever done that. And it still seems like it's a two-part movement for me. When I watch guys who really know how to snatch, they get into a squat position as the bar's even like, you know, still traveling upwards. Whereas I'm kind of slow. I don't really know when to dip, uh, when to stop pulling on the bar, when to kind of go down. Uh, I don't know whether if I put a little bit of weight on the bar, it would be easier to kind of do that because there's momentum in the bar and that momentum with the upward swing of the bar will give me enough time to start kind of dipping underneath it. Uh, but anyway, today was kind of the first time I've, I've tried to do that. You guys will see it in, in this video. Uh, I ended up doing three sets of five of that. Uh, so hang snatch, uh, or is it a hang power snatch because I'm not really dipping under all that quickly. It's like a two part lift for me. All of this terminology as well, I'm trying to learn as well, like hang snatch, power snatch, uh balance snatch or balance jerk uh kind of yeah there's all these different things i'm trying to learn i'm being bombarded by all these videos i'm trying to watch all the videos and it's like i don't know like there's so so much different terminology to kind of learn uh i'm a basketball player you know that's my language you know understanding the game of basketball and, and i'm just trying to think to myself if i was teaching somebody for the first time how to play basketball and and you know, teaching somebody basketball, there's so much terminology there, you know, so much, so much stuff that you could probably, you know, talk about defensively, offensively, skill drills, all that stuff. So by no means am I surprised that there is a lot of terminology for me to learn as well as the actual movement. So I might be probably getting this wrong. It's probably not a hang snatch. Maybe it's a power hang snatch. I don't know. I'm sure you guys will let me know the guys who actually understand the sport um, but I, actually I, I was quite, you know, happy with today's result, even though it's awkward as hell and I feel really unco, you know, the way I was kind of doing it. Um, it's not a fluid kind of motion, e even like the, the triple extension, like it just seems like I'm uncoordinated and of course I'm going to be uncoordinated because I've never done this before, but it was fun. This, the, today was probably the most fun I've had in the last eight days learning the, the, the Olympic weightlifting. Just because I feel like today I actually did a snatch. <laughs> like he was just like, I pulled the bar and then I squatted the bar overhead. And it kind of made me almost run these memory clips of in my mind of the, the people that I've kind of seen, you know, do this really well. I kind of felt like I was doing something close in resemblance to that. Like it's still far away. And, you know, it feels all right when I'm doing it. But then you watch the video and you're like, God, that is horrendous. What are you doing, man? But in your mind, like, you're like, yeah, that, that was a snatch, man. I, I did a snatch right just there. <laughs> yeah, but then you, you look at it and then you're like, obviously your eyes have seen lots and lots of things. And so it's like direct contrast between me and Clarence Kennedy and Klokov and all these other people. I can see I'm on the screen. Here I am. I can, I've seen many people do this, but I've never felt snatching. And so I'm being misled heavily but the feelings that I'm getting from, from my body. So it's kind of like, it's like a, almost like a sobering feeling to actually see what I've just done 
and compared to what I've felt like I've done. It's just it's weird, man. You know, I remember, you know, playing basketball and trying to learn how to shoot the ball. You know, I, I'm shooting the ball and, and my dad's like, no, man, you got to bring the elbow in. You can't have the elbow sticking out at 45 degrees. I, you know, that fall through is not going to be right. Um, not that we used cameras back then, but I would rely on somebody else's eyes to tell me what they saw. And so that eventually I finally get the elbow in to point in the kind of the same direction as the ring and not, not like in a 45 degree thing. So, I, you know, for me, you know, it's so much easier that I've got video. You know, I've got video. You know, I, I'm not going to kid myself. You know, if I didn't have video and I just did whatever I did, I would go home feeling pretty good about myself. Like I've done a lot of snatching today. Like I know exactly what's going on. Uh, but the fact that I can actually see myself doing the movement, it's like, no, you got still plenty of work to do. Um, I'm, I'm kind of almost fantasizing about putting some weight on just the greens, the 40 kilos. That's pretty much doubling the damn thing. I've, I'm doubling the, 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 the resistance that I've used so far, which is a huge jump. But just something that I can actually feel the weight. I don't think 40 kilos is too heavy. Although I'm kind of still scared about snatching the thing overhead. The biggest fear is what if I overcook it and the bar goes backwards? What do I do then? I don't want the bar to fall on my back. I don't want the shoulders to snap, you know. And so that's the fear, basically. You know, uh, in the front squat, it's no worries. You just kind of drop it. In the back squat, you just kind of flick it backwards. But the fact that the bar's overhead and the shoulders are in between you and the bar... And the shoulders are a, they're a very mobile joint and with high mobility comes high risk, right? All sorts of things can happen. So I'm still probably going to stick with the bar for maybe another week or so uh, and go from there. Uh, simple as that. That's how I'm looking at it. Um, a lot of you guys are saying, oh, you know, probably strong enough to do things. I might, might be strong enough, but, you know, I'm still not confident about that. What I might do, though, is uh, load the overhead squat a little bit. Maybe that. But the whole snatching business and trying to catch the thing at the top, that scares the hell out of me. Um, now that I think about it, even overhead squatting is, is, is scary to me because, once again, the thing is overhead. What if I overcook it and the bar goes backwards? I guess you could always kind of throw it forward. I don't know. Uh, it's a lot of things are going through my mind. Um, but I spent a good 30 minutes messing around with this today. You know, messing around with all of these lifts. Um, <laughs> the balance is a big thing. Now that I'm, you know, actually experiencing doing this, uh, I can see how difficult this actually is uh, because there's so much going on, man. So much going on. It's, um, frankly, I can't, even, I, I can't even imagine having 100 kilos on that bar and doing this. It's just a, it's a completely different sport. Like these weights that we kind of get used to with powerlifting, 200, 250 squat, you know, 300 kilo squat. Like this is all kind of fantasy stuff, man. It's just like the, all of these numbers mean something different in Olympic weightlifting, completely different because 60 kilos in weightlifting is not the same as 60 kilos in powerlifting. It's just you're doing completely different things with it. And so there's like a new reverence that I have for each plate that I put on the bar now. Even when I'm doing the deadlift, I'm like, wow, man, this is a lot of weight. Thank God I don't have to throw it around. I just have to lift it to the hip and drop it. Um, but it's, it's, it's interesting. I mean, today was a really good session. I, I was actually quite spent before I even started training today, before you guys are seeing the video. Uh, there was probably another probably 45 minutes before the first clip of this video that I trained, maybe even an hour, man. I don't think about it. I rocked up and I wanted to warm up my hips and I wanted to do reverse lunges. So I started doing that. I ended up doing, you guys are going to think I'm absolutely nuts. I ended up doing 18 sets. So I ended up doing five sets of 10 reverse lunges with just body weight. Then I grabbed two pair, so a pair of uh, 10 kilos. So 20 kilos. Uh, I did five sets of 10 with that. And then I finally got to my, I guess, working weight, uh, which was 20 kilo dumbbells. So two of them, so 40 kilos. And I ended up, I wanted to do five, and I did five, but then the squat racks were uh, busy at that point. And so I was like, okay, I'll do another one and another one. I ended up doing three more. So that's eight sets of 10 with the 20 kilo dumbbells. Uh, and you can imagine legs were kind of already spent. Uh, my, my hips were spent. 
Uh, but all of that, you know, hip work kind of made me feel a little bit more comfortable in that overhead squat position. Um, so it kind of made me feel really good. And then you guys also saw I was doing the shoulder dislocates, dislocation, I don't know what you call it, shoulder dislocates. Um, just that whole shoulder uh, warm up thing. What I ended up using is I went into my garage and I tried to look for a band, but I don't really have any bands anymore, man. Like they're all gone. I don't know where. I think I once upon a time used to have bands, but I think they're all snapped up. Um, so I ended up taking this strap that I have. I think the strap is basically uh, a like car pulling, I don't know what you call it, car towing strap. It's like graded to something like crazy stupid amount of weight that it can hold. Um, I can't even remember why I've got this in my garage. I think I was trying to rig up some sort of a pulley device for training at one point in time. I think that was the case with that because I don't think I did any towing with this, this thing. But anyway, it's long enough for me to do the shoulder dislocates, and it, it really does warm up the shoulders, really does stretch out the pecs and get you prepared for overhead work. So I'm really blessed uh, that you guys told me that. That's a really, really good idea. It's probably like the best thing you can do for shoulders uh before doing overhead squatting or snatching so that, I, I really like that that really prepared me and then the glute work that i did and the hip work the, the the quad work that i did with the lunges that also kind of felt really good so i think that's that's the plan for moving forward i think with olympic weightlifting although i got carried away with the lunges today but you know just a few sets of 10 or whatever uh reverse lunges or walking lunges whatever lunges you want to do some something unilateral kind of leg work uh, really does kind of fire up the hips and, you know, the adductors and the glutes and all of that and kind of makes you ready uh, for Olympic weightlifting. So I'll, I'll definitely do that tomorrow as well before I, I get going with Olympic weightlifting. But after doing all of that, basically an hour went by before I even got to the squatting bit. And so you can see here 160 for one felt really heavy, felt awfully heavy. I was kind of hoping 170 because yesterday I had work and I only hit 120 or something like this so i thought oh i'm pretty fresh nah man by the time i got around to it i was spent man spent um and after that i was like either i'll go home or i'll do deadlifts uh ended up trying to do some deadlifts i have not done these in probably a week now i've kind of been doing a bunch of rack pulls so i did that i worked up to 240 that kind of felt all right but once again the top weight was really really heavy for me the glutes were smashed the quads were smashed everything was smashed so that was basically the session that was basically the session. The highlight for me today was the the fact that I combined everything I know in Olympic weightlifting so far into one. So I tried to make it as smooth as possible from the knee to, to the overhead and, and, and squat. Uh, I think this is what, I mean, from, from what I understand, this is what separates good lifters from the greats, is that the greats have basically athleticism. Yeah, I think in Olympic weightlifting, it's not just about pulling on the bar, and then squatting the bar. Uh, it's actually the transition between the pull and the squat. So you can pull all you want, but the, to have the ability to kind of dip underneath it is, I feel, like the most difficult thing about the sport. Once again, I don't really know anything about the sport, but doing it today, I was like, wow, it's actually, you need to go from one extreme to another extreme, basically, in a, in a, in a, you know, as, as quickly as you can. So you're going from a pull and then you are dipping really, really quickly. So you're going from extension to flexion uh, in, in order for you to get underneath the bar and catch it. You know, so full triple extension and then full triple flexion. That's how it seems to me. I mean, I could be completely wrong in, in analyzing this, but, you know, everyone has been talking about triple extension. So ankle, knee and hip extension, throw the bar up as far as you can and continue pulling on the bar with your hands. Uh, but then what happens, the very next kind of uh, uh, goal of the movement is you need to go into triple flexion, which is, you know, squat down, which is hip and ankle flexion um, and knee flexion as well. I mean, you have to go back to the square one, right? In order to catch the bar and then catch the bar with precision. All of this done without you even looking at the bar. You got to be looking at somewhere else. So it's kind of like you are doing it in dark. It's a freaking difficult sport, man. It's a difficult, difficult sport. And I can, I can appreciate the complexity, the, the skill, the technical mastery that, that's required for this. And if you guys know anything about me, that is so up my alley, man. 
I just want to shoot free throws. I want to do a thousand free throws a day. And here I am now discovering Olympic weightlifting. And I feel like this is me just, you know, just, <laughs> you know, working on my skills. I love that. I love that. Because training for me has never been just about feeling the pump, feeling exhausted, smashing the weights, you know, going 70 to 85% maxes of your max. That's, you know, just pushing weight, muscle, muscle, muscle. I've always kind of had this appreciation basically ever since Pavel Tzatzulian talked about Grease and the Groove in that book when I read it, this aspect of the neural component of lifting. You know, he said strength is a neuromuscular expression. So that there's a nerve component there. Obviously, some sports favor more neuro than strength uh, or, or the muscular rather. But Olympic weightlifting is heavy on the neuro. It's very, very heavy. Obviously, you need, you need muscle, you need strength, you need all of that. But the neuro side of things is a big dictator of how advanced you're going to be in, in this game. Um, and I think that's the appeal to the sport, at least from, from where I'm sitting and where, I'm, where I've, uh, what I've uh, 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 observed so far, this idea that there are so many aspects rolled into one man. You know, there's power, there's, you know, there's strength, there's speed, um, mobility, flexibility, technique, Oh, man. And then before you even get to the whole programming and how you're going to go about it and time under the bar and whatnot, it's a really cool thing. It's a really cool thing. And I kind of sit here and I wish I did it earlier. But still, you know, I don't regret what I did trying to you know, perfect the squat, trying to understand the squat, because that in itself is also a big thing. You know, if you're going day one into Olympic weightlifting, Olympic weightlifting, and you have to learn not just the actual snatch and clean and jig. We have to learn how to squat. Oh my God, it's a big, big task. Big, big task. At least I know how to, you know, squat. You know, I have some strength there. There's a, there's a base. So I just got to build from there and learn the actual sport, learn the skill. Um, there's a name I want to mention in today's video. Uh, Brandon Mercado. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly, man. Appreciate you for coming on. Appreciate you for supporting me on my journey. Uh, appreciate you for, 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 for supporting the channel. You know, it's... Uh, it means a lot, you know, this is page number five now uh, of names of people who are supporting me and that's an absolute blessing and, and I'm, I'm so grateful for everyone for, for doing this. So thank you, Brandon, and thank you else, everybody else on the list. I uh, appreciate the comments. I'll be hitting the comments next few days. Uh, I've got days off now, so I'll be reading all that, trying to learn from you guys, sharing ideas um, on YouTube comments and Instagram. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.